Hello guys, welcome back to the Java tutorial and as promised I'm gonna bring the solution to the last tutorial in this tutorial which is about making lists and in the last tutorial I was unable to solve a problem of removing values from a list in this tutorial of the solution now. Well, the solution was pretty easy actually and I completely missed the concept. However, in this tutorial I'm just gonna show it to you. First of all, make sure that the spinner that you're having has appropriate uh, um, data type of values. So, uh, look for the model property in the properties list and in the button select integer in the number type. Make sure that integer is selected. If any other, if uh, um, double is selected, it would not run. It would give you an, an error, some sort of index passing error or something. I don't know. So, basically, that's how you would. Uh, do the spinner and uh, you would make sure that the step size is 1 because I had it um, 0 for it before and that would just not be right. Okay, so after you have done that, may I click on the button and in the action perform method what we're going to do is we're going to take the value from the spinner which, which would be an object, basically it's an integer object but it would return an object. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to define an integer variable, index equals integer dot parse int, and we're going to convert the object to string. And so we're just going to say j spinner one dot get value class. So yeah, that's it. So that would if you if you add anything like this, that would convert that 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 particular thing to string. And we're gonna just pass the string, so it's gonna be easy. Another thing that we need is we need to remove. So, as we saw before, the the items that are stored inside is this list, and we have defined the list here. So we so we basically remove the item from the list, and then we would be able to remove it from the list box. However, then we need to update the list box as well to show the user that the item has been removed. So we need this later. But later, as I said, later. No, yeah. Uh, well, I'm just gonna copy it for now and just Control C. And I'm just gonna go down here and I'm, what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say list, which is the array list that holds the items for the list J list. List dot uh, remove and in the index I'm gonna pass the index. So it's gonna remove the item at the index that is that has been selected by the user in the JSPinner one. So that's how it works basically, and we and I was gonna press an enter, and I'm gonna update the thingy. So I was gonna say this again. So what? Um, so what's happening here is I'm declaring a list model, and then I'm passing the list here, as you see, and I'm just, uh, and I'm just setting the list model to it. That's it, and that would remove the item from the list. So press Shift of six, and it should work. Okay, so let's see here what's going on. Okay, let's add some values to it. Apple, mango, banana. Uh, I can't think of any fruit. Tomato, potato. Okay, whatever. Okay, well, and what I'm going to select is I want to take banana from it. So I'm going to say 0, 1, 2. So the banana is item number 2. So I'm going to select 2 in here. I'm going to click this. And if you see, banana is gone. Gonna, uh, I want to remove apple. So I'm just going to say 0 here. I'm going to click this. So apple is removed. If I, again I do this, then mango will be removed. So Because mango is now the 0th um, item. So if we do this, mango is removed. Um, tomato is removed. Um, potato is removed. And if I do it again, then I'm, then I'm going to get an array next out of bounds exception. To handle, I mean, to handle this, I need a try and catch. Yes, very good. I need to try and catch here. Well, I'm not going to do it now because this is not a try and catch. This is actually a container tutorial. So let's start discussing containers. I'm going to create a new job of JFrame form. And tutorial 6. And in this JFrame form, I'm going to drag some controls. Well, if if you don't have if you don't have these controls, it's fine. But basically, these are required because sometimes, I mean, things don't work out as they should every time. So, first of all, we are going to look at the panel, which is extremely useful and which is my personal favorite. Okay, the main advantage of panel is that you can hide and unhide items within the panel. 
So what you can do is, if I have this panel, uh, it's okay. Let me um, think of an example. Um, okay, so I've got panel of this and panel of this. And what I basically want is that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a few buttons in this panel. And this one, and this one, and a few buttons in here, in here, in here. Okay. So, <coughs> what I want is that if you if you click J button four, it should disable this panel, and it should if you um, disable basically all the buttons inside the panel. If I click this, it should disable all the buttons, and if I click this, it should enable all the buttons. Okay. Let's put three. It's just two. Does it remove three? It's two. So if I click button four, it should disable all of the buttons. One, two, three. If I click five, it should enable all three buttons. The traditional way would be to double click this. I mean, it is the way actually. So you double click this, and then we say that J button one dot set enabled false, and then J button. But this technique is boring because what if I add another control to it? Then this would create errors. It would say that uh, this is not. Uh, I mean, it, uh, I'll have to add it again. I'll have to add a control to also enable through and enable the false and crap like that, which is an impractical. So, to solve these panels over there, all the controls that you put inside a panel can be disabled by disabling the panel itself or hiding the panel. That's the best way. So, I'm just going to say J panel, J panel one dot set visible false. Okay. That will just hide it, and I'm going to go back to the design, and I'm going to say this one. So J panel one two dot set. Oh shit, no one, right? Okay, let me just check this quickly. This is J panel one. That is correct. Okay, so if you click button four, it's gonna hide the J panel one, and if you click J button five, it's gonna Unhide to panel. Let's run the code and let's see it for ourselves. Click this, all the bombs are hidden. Click this, all the bombs are there. That's the main benefit of panel. Another benefit of panel is that it's going to allow you to arrange things. So, uh, for instance, you can change the layout of the panel itself, which is, I mean, absolute layout for the panel. So I can change everything like this. And, and in here, the uh, layout is still the um, freeform layout, if you see here. The layout is still free design, but in this panel, the layout is absolute layout. Sorry, what? It was absolute layout, right? Yeah, it is absolute layout. So you see the um, dashed lines here, which means it's an absolute layout. And in here, you you get these uh, uh, dotted things, which is which means it's free form. Okay, so that's the main benefit of panel. Now we are going to move on to the tabbed pane. Now, t panels are useful for tabbed pane as well because tabbed pane would basically hold panels. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag a tabbed pane here. Tabbed pane is coming here. And I can add tabs to it. Well, basically by this. And. Oh, shit. So basically, I've now added the panel to the tab as tab one. So now tab one is having the panel one, and I can create another panel with some things in it. So I'm just gonna drag this over here, and I'm going to add a checkbox, and I'm gonna add a ch oh shit, I'm gonna add a radio button. And I'm gonna add a list. Okay, and I'm gonna add this panel. Can well, I need another tab basically? So uh, well, by clicking here and can't do this. Okay, let me just drag this off. It's gonna create another tab for me if you drag it here. 
So I have now tab one and tab two. I can rename tabs by double clicking. Uh, oh, not not here. I can just say set the tab title to here in here. Tab. Oh man, where's the tab thingy? Okay, here. Tab one. I'm gonna say uh, button tab. And for this one, I'm just gonna click in here and control tab. Okay. So now you can swap around the control tab and button tab. And well, basically, this, uh, well, that's how tab works. So you press Shift F6, and now you have button tabs and control tabs. So as you see in here, I have um, button tabs and these control tabs. So basically, that's how the containers work. Containers just hold things inside them. And they basically allow you to manipulate the layouts as well within them. As I showed you, the freeform layout in this one, and the uh, free free design layout in this one with the, all these things. Yeah, so basically that's it for this to show. Oh no, I have to discuss the thingy as well. So I'm just gonna drag this out of the way. Let's yeah, scroll roll pane. This is another important part of the thing so I can drag this panel inside and I can say that I want this here and then I can have a size lower than this so the user can scroll through the things so the user can scroll through and access this button and the user can scroll up and access this button so for that's just for instance if you for just because if you have a lot of items on the screen and if you want to have a scroll roll thing it's a really good idea to have a scroll because uh, every time it the using hide and unhide of tabs doesn't necessarily facilitate the organization of controls so in these cases these is really important to have uh, different uh, containers like the scroll pane the tabs or panels, like individual panels, and hide them and unhide them and stuff like that. So these are really important aspects of a form while designing a form or while of, or while designing an intuitive gra graphical user, designing an intuitive graphical user interface GUI that would facilitate users uh, that would facilitate uh, access to the con computer's uh, f um, features. So it's really important. My next tutorial is going to be about, uh, it's going to be more about controls and some of the basic, I mean it's not basic now, um, it's going to be a bit about GUI and we are going to practice a bit more about on different things like the most importantly the table. The table is the most uh, important tool that I've ever come across. I would also show you how to use it, how to add items to it and stuff like that and uh, well basically that's it for this tutorial so I'm going to see you in the next tutorial till then, see you later, bye bye and enjoy making panels